Hey guys, it's Danny. How are you doing? Hope you had some great holidays if you celebrated and if you didn't, hope you had some great days. Ever since I saw you last, I took a little bit of a break, yes, but I got to spend some time with family, with friends and also catch a little bit of a cold. That's why my voice might sound a little weird. Not to worry though, everything is okay. Today I thought we could update some projects or some things that I changed in my collection this year talk a little bit about the current setup and some projects like the fake specimen and how these orchids are doing today. So without further ado, let us actually start with the fake specimen because it's looking wonderful right now. Ta-da! Here she is! Isn't she gorgeous? This is my Guariantha orantiaca hybrid. I don't have an ID for it, but judging by the looks of it, I think it's pretty clear that at least she's an orantiaca hybrid. Which one? Not entirely sure yet. I have a few ideas, but I don't want to get it wrong, so I'm just going to call it a hybrid. And if you don't know the story with this orchid, check it down below in the description or in an info card that you will have throughout this video all the time on the screen. In your upper right corner, you will always have the letter I icon. If you click on it, it will expand. You will always have the info cards. Anyway, a little resume, I purchased this one from a flower shop, it was around Valentine's Day and for Valentine's my boyfriend purchased me the very same one and I decided to just pot both of them together and create the so-called fake specimen, a bushy plant at the end of the day. And well, it worked. I'm not sure why you're laughing, Joy, because it worked, clearly. I would say it worked, wouldn't you? In this pot, there are actually two orchids, but being that they are identical, they're the same variety, you cannot really tell. And this is something you can always do with sympodial orchids, such as cattleyas, dendrobiums, oncidiums. You can actually pot multiple individuals from the same species or the same variety in the same pot, and you're gonna get the look of a very bushy plant, which looks like one. There are some pros and cons to this that you should know about if you're considering it, so do check out the description, I do have a video talking at length about this, being that both of these orchids came from the very same flower shop and probably the same nursery and probably they're identical, most probably they shared all sorts of pathogens during their stay at the nursery or at least in transport, so the risk for me was very very minimal. The effect is the one that I wanted and in the end it looks like I have a super bushy orchid with one, two, three, four, five directions of growth and I do have some buds in the back when in fact there are two orchids with about two or three directions of growth each. Now sometimes you can obtain something like this without actually faking it. Joey has a problem with me today. If you've ever purchased seedlings, you might already know that typically you get multiple plants in one pot. When they're very, very tiny, orchids kind of look the same and it's very hard to break them apart. It's also risky for the roots and their little stems, so what nurseries do is just pot multiple plants in one pot, pretty much a clump from that seed flask. And as they grow, they will actually end up looking like this if nobody else divides it. In a commercial nursery, this doesn't really happen. Usually they get divided because, hey, there's more money here. So it is in their best interest to properly divide them and plant one single plant per pot. And in this way, obviously, you increase your profit. But for nurseries which are not so high volume, let's call them, you will actually get cattleyas, dendrobiums, and even phalaenopsis sometimes that have multiple plants in one pot. So if you grow an orchid from seedling, there is a very, very, very high chance that you will obtain something like this naturally, simply because you already have multiple plants in one pot when you purchase the seedling. If you purchase plants from flower shops or garden centers, you can achieve something like this simply by potting two plants that look identical in the same pot. And I, for one, absolutely love this look. I love specimen orchids. That's why I don't actually divide my orchids. I want them to grow bushy and have multiple directions of growth because this is just phenomenal. Next up, a more recent project. These are the Rupiculus Lelias. If you missed the video on them, again, you have it down below and also in the info card, which is always on the screen. And some of you might remember that what I did was try to pot them in ceramics again because these are rock-dwelling Lelias and the internet tells me that I need to pot them in rocks. And I decided to, okay, listen to it and do that, even though 
I'm very tempted at this point to make a parallel comparison or a parallel project. I'll get to that. So in that video, I used a combination of ceramics, a few rocks and also some lava rock because lava rock actually contains iron and in their natural habitat, these orchids do seem to have quite a lot of iron rich rocks. If they benefit from the iron, I'm not sure. To be fully honest, it might just be there not having any impact on the orchids. That is a possibility. Anyway, here is a first update. My heart is breaking. <laughs> so first of all, these orchids have started to grow. They've started to produce roots and new growth. They're super vigorous. I was not expecting that because everybody talks about them like they're these super finicky type of orchids. So far, I have not seen that. I mean, let me show you. This is one that had no roots. She was dehydrated and look at her. She is trying to grow. No roots in the pot yet, obviously they're pretty recent, but look at those roots. Now, let me tell you, or actually show you, why I'm a little heartbroken and I'm seriously considering to just change it up. No, not happy with how things are growing. Which one was it? There is one which has longer roots. Okay, this one. So the roots are growing, but do you see all of this spotting on the roots? They look a little bit like some sort of mold or some sort of damage to the root system. Now, I don't like this. In the end, it might be okay, or the orchid might actually do okay even with this damage. But do I like it? No. Does it make me feel confident in the setup? No. Was this set up an experiment? Yes. And as any experiment goes, we can always switch it up or give up the experiment. Now, if you remember from that video, some of these Lelias had roots while others did not, such as this one. This only has one single root. Do you see it? That is the only root it has, which grew in the air and has no spots because it did not touch the medium. I'm just gonna rest it like that for now. Do I want this root? single root might I'd add to touch that medium and get spots and just not do well and stress the orchid which is already dehydrated and stressed? No, I do not. I'm actually pretty nervous about that. So what I have decided is to give up the ceramics idea and go for something which is a lot more friendly to the root system. And what I think is happening is what I told you a long long time ago about ceramics when it dries it starts to pull moisture from the roots and it damages them. And if I'm not careful and miss a day or two of watering because life reasons, then the roots get damaged. And I, I just don't wanna go through that. So what I decided to do is just get myself some rocks. These are just some river rocks. And at least for some of them, switch it up to a combination between the rocks and a little bit of sphagnum moss. Rocks, they're great materials for growing orchids. Their only downfall is that they're not wicking. And you do wanna have a little bit of wicking in the orchid medium if you're not hosing down the orchids or flushing them every time you water. And as you guys know, I don't flush every time I water. So these alone will not work. So I'm thinking that these ones, which don't have a lot of roots, I will pot them up in something like this. I might mix a little bit of lava rock there but I will use sphagnum moss just to help them out with the new roots because the ceramics is not doing a great job. And half of them I'm thinking to actually pot in bark and sphagnum moss and see the difference between them. I'm willing to go through that experiment and see with our own very eyes and the eye of the camera, which one is doing better if there is such a thing. If they all turn out to grow successfully, then hey presto, miss debunked, you can pot these ladies in whatever you want. But if I see a difference, then you will be the first ones to know. So let me know if you want me to make a separate video about it. I can film it and pretty much start off 2020 with this experiment. For now, that's about it. That's the update on the Lelia setup. I'm not sure if it's going bad, but I know it can go better. Let's put it like that. Next up, the Neophinacias. This is not necessarily an update other than, yeah, I have four Neos, but a sort of here's what I'm doing and we're gonna see the results in the spring if there's gonna be any result. So first of all, my oldest Neo is this one. Currently she's residing outside. Ever since I have this orchid, which is about three to four years, she has grown beautifully. She was a tiny, tiny little baby when I acquired it almost like this one and she grew beautifully but never bloomed and she is blooming size so i decided to keep her outside during this winter because these orchids can tolerate cold temperatures very very well 
Now outside, things are not freezing. Once every 10 years or so, things can go down to zero degrees Celsius, or not even that, one or two degrees Celsius. And this year doesn't appear to be one of those years. It's actually pretty warm. But in the night, I can have six, seven degrees Celsius. So I'm trying to kind of chill this one and see if it helps with blooming in the spring. Now I'm not watering this orchid in the winter time. They rarely actually do need water unless they're growing. And this one is a very, very healthy orchid, has a good root system, totally adapted. So I have no worry with this one outside. I'm monitoring her. So far, she looks absolutely great. So it is an experiment to see if I can actually induce some blooming because there are some sources that suggest a cool down will actually help. And since this one didn't bloom, hey, what do I have to lose? The other ones are not currently sitting outside, although one of them might go outside. So first of all, the variegated Neophonisha that I got last year, she is not as established as my older Neophonisha. She has roots and they're growing, you can see, but I was a little bit afraid to put this one outside and decided that I can wait one more year to see flowers from this one. I first want to see her established. I want to see this pot full of roots, just growing and looking great and see growing tips everywhere and then blooms. Flowers are kind of always on the last place for me. I first want to have healthier kids. So this one is staying the winter in the grow space and probably the chances of blooming are compromised, but it's okay. This one, I don't think you know, unless you've seen the picture in the community tab. Okay, so this is a neon that I received very recently from Veronica and it did not have any roots, but I potted it and it started to grow the most beautiful, beautiful roots. The root tips are actually super, super pink. The roots are now going inside the medium, so I don't want to disturb them, but this one has pink root tips and it's absolutely gorgeous. One of the things that growers appreciate about neos are the root tips and the color of the root tips. And some neos just have the most wonderful color on their root tips. I've never had one of those neos. This is one of them and I absolutely love it. And look how tiny it is. Obviously, this is a little baby. And considering she didn't have roots and needs to be established, she's not going anywhere. She's growing in the greenhouse this winter. And this is the latest Neophonisha that I received in the mystery box from Orchids Deluxe. This might go outside because she's very, very well established. I do have roots, even though you don't really see them all that well. I just repotted it and she looks very, very good. Another thing to know about Neophonisha's, there are many, many varieties on the market. Some of them have this type of variegation that looks like spotting on the leaves. This is not chlorosis or anything of the sorts. It's not a disease, a virus or pest damage or anything of the sorts. It is how the orchid is supposed to look like. She's supposed to have these discolorations on their leaves. It's part of the appeal. And if you check the Orchids Deluxe website, you will actually see multiple varieties with all sorts of spots, variegation, marks on them. They're supposed to have those marks. But yeah, behold, I have four Neophonisha's of my own and I'm so happy now. I would be much, much happier if they bloomed. But I'm trying with this one and I'm thinking to put this one outside as well because she looks good. But yeah, we'll see in the spring if this actually works or not. Next up, some more tiny orchids, the telumnias. You might know that traditionally I grew my telumnias in those baskets with sphagnum moss and I was watering them through soaking. And that worked out pretty great for me. It's a pretty standard way to grow telumnias. Uh, the only problem was algae. Inevitably at some point, algae grew out and I just cannot stand them. Now, a few of my telumnias were very, very, very set back. I purchased them last year from the German seller, which I'll talk about today again anyway and they weren't in good shape at all they were very sit back and instead of having them in that basket which dried out very fast I kept them potted because it helped me out with watering and guess what they were doing fantastic potted just as well as the ones in the basket the difference was it was easier for me to keep them watered so I decided hey you know what 
I'm going to make my life easier and I will actually pot my telumias. And so I did. And they're actually doing so, so much better potted because I obviously do not need to water them as often. And since the medium stays a little bit more moist, the roots grow a little bit better and without being interrupted. So right now what I'm doing is I am potting my Tumnia orchids in very tiny pots as you can see depending on the size. I mean some of the pots are a little bit bigger because the orchid is a little bit bigger but for the main part I am using very very tiny pots and I find that it's so so much easier for me to take care of these orchids potted. Now you might have heard on the internet that these orchids are best kept mounted or rather dry than wet and all of these stories, which is just not true. They are no different than any other orchid actually. All you need to make sure is that the roots do get air. If there is no air in the pot, then that's when the problems start. So being that my pot is super tiny and I'm using aeration medium as well as sphagnum moss, there is no reason why this orchid should not do well and as you can see it does. It doesn't actually necessarily need to be mounted or even dry out in between waterings because there is just so much air in there that it really just doesn't matter. If you make sure to provide the parameters they need then the sky's the limit when it comes to setups. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is probably the biggest change that happened this year going back to the organic medium setup with mainly bark and sphagnum moss. After quite a few years of trying to make a leka and all sorts of ceramic materials work, as much as I like them and I like the idea of not having to repot because of bad medium, it just didn't work out. I was not happy with how I needed to water, what I needed to do in order to make everything work, specifically the pH altering thing, which oh, just got so, so old after more than a year of doing that. So for now, I don't believe inorganic media has reached the level that I personally want. And I do believe that sphagnum moss is still the best medium you can find for orchids. And it will work absolutely great if you know how to use it. So in my mix, sphagnum is the one that keeps everything kind of wet and even, and bark is the thing that gives aeration. I was using a little bit of perlite and also leka in the mix, but I discovered they're just not needed in this environment. They make things way, way too airy. But of course, they are good materials for those environments which might be different than mine. I don't need to alter the water anymore, so needless to say, watering has gotten easier and everything works a little bit better. The major, major downside will be that I will need to repot every couple of years or maybe a little bit more. But it will mean that I will have to make quite the investment every couple of years or so. Which, you know, it's not ideal, but it works the greatest so far. I will keep trying to find the alternative to organic medium. I will always do experiments, but for now, I haven't found that perfect, perfect solution for me. But I'm happy that through my experiments, I found stuff that actually work out for you. There are still many viewers who use one of my older setups and are perfectly happy with it which at the end of the day, it's what it's all about. I don't have a YouTube channel to showcase the beautiful flowers. I have a YouTube channel to maybe inspire and give ideas. Not everything will work for me, but some of these things will work for you, which is awesome. But who knows in the future, maybe we will get alternatives, which might save us some money and my work better than what we currently have. Alrighty then, so this has been it for this entire year. Next time we see each other might actually be 2020 or the last day of 2019 when we're gonna do the Orchids in Bloom video. We'll see how I manage to upload them, but in case we don't see each other, I just wanna wish you guys a super, super great year ahead. Hopefully you're gonna stick around and discover new and exciting things about orchids. I might actually do a 2020 goals when it comes to orchids and what I want to focus on in 2020, but maybe next week or in two weeks from now. If you guys have suggestions of what you'd like to see in 2020 on my channel as well, do leave me a comment down below. i like to hear from you and who knows, maybe we're gonna do some experiments that you guys suggest. And until then, thank you so much for watching and I appreciate you hanging out with me and sticking by me all of these years. And with that said, Happy New Year. See you guys next time. Bye.